lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. This is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live with James Jacob Prash. Jacob recently went on a tour of Israel, and one of the new believers uh, that was on the tour who got saved, praise God for that, uh, had the question about the seed of Moses. Now, we, we visited one of the sites where there was a seed of Moses. Did Moses actually sit on this seat, or what did that represent? Well, first of all, praise God that someone got saved during a Bible study tour. What a wonderful place to get saved, Israel. The best seat of Moses preserved archaeologically, and the one he, he may be referring to, is at the synagogue ruins of Kordazim, of, of Kordazim, which is in the same area as Capernaum and Bethsaida. It is a black basalt structure with the seat of Moses found inside of it. The seat of Moses was an actual, literal seat. It is where the preacher or the drashan, who was usually a visiting rabbi or an itinerant rabbi, would sit on Sabbaths from where he would teach and expound the, the Torah or the Haft Torah. It was also a general metaphor for theocratic governance, bearing in mind that Israel had a national covenant where there were not distinctions between civil and criminal law and religious law, as it were, although there was a Roman law that was separate from the Jewish law. Among the Jews, the seat of Moses is where the Levites who would make the decisions would sit and give rulings if something was permissible or not according to Jewish law what later became known as halakha, but don't worry about it. They would pronounce things either a sword or a tear, allowed or forbidden, and that's where they would sit. It would sometimes be a Levite, it would sometimes be someone other of some rabbinic authority. Jesus said they have seated themselves on the seat of Moses. They are there by the authority of man, not by the authority of God, certain things began to go wrong in the time of Jesus. The Zadokites, from the time of Ezekiel onward, the sons of Zadok, were the priestly family who were to control the high priest. But the Zadokites became corrupted. Sadokim, Sadokim, Sadducees. They became completely corrupted, even though their forefathers were good men in the Hasmonean period, in the intertestamental period, they became corrupted. People began assuming religious authority and with it a certain amount of civil authority and social position. They put themselves there. So Jesus said when they're seated on the seat of Moses, do what they tell you but not what they do. Think of a difference between an honest policeman and a corrupt policeman. If you have an honest policeman, an honest cop doing an honest job, He's protecting the public. He's enforcing laws that are in the public interest. He doesn't take bribes. He doesn't misuse or abuse authority. He's an honest cop. He's an honest, he or she or an honest person. Okay, that's one thing. The problem is a certain percentage of cops, not, I'm not saying all of them by any means or even the majority, but there are crooked cops. There are absolutely are known to be crooked cops not just abusers of power, but people who take bribes and all sorts. Um, nonetheless, they have the same badge. They have the same badge. They shouldn't be cops. They should be removed from that position. Some of them should be criminally prosecuted. Nonetheless, as long as they have that badge, even though we can't be 
respect them. We must respect the badge. We must respect their position and comply with what they say as long as it does not require us to break the law. Okay? As long as it does not require us to break the law or to violate God's law, we need to go along with them, even though they may be corrupt. Now, we can pray that God removes them, exposes them, and so forth, but we have to respect the position, the badge. I have absolutely no respect for the majority of American presidents. I have no respect for the Bush family, the Bush dynasty. I had nothing but contempt for Barack Obama's administration. I believe that these were corrupt administrations who acted against the national interest. I have no respect for Barack Obama, no respect for George Bush. I have more respect for a prostitute on the street than I do for Bill Clinton or Barack Obama or, or, or George Bush. I have, I have more respect for a pimp. Personally, that's my now. But I still had to pray for them because they were in the position of authority. Didn't like them, but I still had to pray for them for the good of the nation and for the good of the church that we may lead peaceable lives. Bad as they may have been, they would have been worse without the prayers of God's people. Secondly, I had to respect their position. They were in that position. In my view, they should not have been in that position. But they are in that position. There are others who would say the same thing about Donald Trump. They don't think he should be the president. They say he's not my president. That doesn't matter. He may not be your president, but he is still the president. The early Christians were even told to pay, pray in, in Romans 13 for the pagan imperial emperors of Rome. We have to respect the position of authority, whether we respect the person who was in it or not, unless they tell us to go against the law of God. Now, today, we have a further complication. There are unsaved Jews attempting to defend Talmudic Judaism that only existed in an incipient form in the time of Jesus. The Judaism you see today did not come into existence until 70 AD when the temple was destroyed and the Biblical Judaism was replaced by Rabbinic Judaism, Talmudic Judaism as it came to be. <coughs> but I have been Orthodox Jews today who say, you see, if you're a believer, you follow the teachings of Jesus and you should still listen to the rabbis and do what they say even if you don't like them because that's what Jesus said to do. That's that's not what Jesus meant. You follow them in terms of their instruction at that time when it was real Judaism. The Judaism today is not even scripturally valid. At that time, you comply with what they say as long as they were applying the Torah, the law of Moses. But once they began teaching as priests of so God, the inventions of men, it was something different. When they complained to Jesus, why is it that your disciples don't follow the tradition of the elders? We're on the seat of Moses. They should do what we tell them. And Jesus said, Isaiah warned about you. You're teaching us precepts So God, the inventions of men. You sit on the seat of Moses and apply the law of Moses. But you're not applying the law of Moses. You're applying the inventions of men. Now, this is not only true of Talmudic Judaism. It is greatly true of Roman Catholicism, of Eastern Orthodoxy, and of heavy shepherding churches and cults, even when they profess to be evangelical. Who are you to question us? They are teaching and doing things that are unscriptural. Who are you to question us? You are in rebellion if you don't do what we say. I knew one an extremely ignorant man who was extremely arrogant. He was he was as ignorant as he was arrogant. And he was teaching soaking. He said he was a pastor and he had people on the floor trying to soak up the Holy Spirit. He just sat himself on the seat of Moses, as it were. There's no such teaching in Scripture as laying on the floor trying to soak up the Holy Spirit. He just perverted the text out of context in order to try to artificially 
give some credence or lend some credence or scriptural basis to what he was doing, which was nothing more than lording it over the sheep, a deed of the Nicolaitans, as Jesus referred to it, suppression of the people. No. You, you respect people in positions of leadership as long as they are applying the word of God. When they began applying the doctrinal inventions of men like soaking, you don't pay attention to them. When they began, like the Sadducees and the Pharisees with the tradition of the elders, you don't have to pay attention to them. It's only when they're speaking with the authority of Moses. There was an incident in America, in Utah, several weeks ago, where a policeman who was also a paramedic attempted to force compel a nurse to take a blood sample of somebody who was involved in an accident who did not even cause the accident. He was not under arrest. There was no court order, court injunction. There was no arrest. And the nurse did not have the patient's permission to take the blood sample and give it to the police. It would have been illegal. The hospital could have been sued and she could have lost a license. But this extremely arrogant and extremely stupid police detective dragged her out on handcuffs, attempted to arrest her. He lost his job and he should have. A man like that should not have a badge. He tried to force her to break the law and then arrest her when she wouldn't do it. I'm glad he lost his job. If it was up to me, I would have locked him up for a year. See how he likes it. But I'm glad he lost his job and his badge. And I don't think he should be allowed to work as a paramedic anymore either. Let him go sweep the streets or something. He doesn't deserve a job of public trust. Nonetheless, if that same cop had seen an armed robbery in progress or seen a carjacking in progress, you have to respect his badge as long as he was applying the law lawfully. That is the principle. That is what Jesus meant. But yes, it was a literal chair. Uh, and I believe you've seen one. You probably saw the one in the synagogue rooms in Chorazin in Galilee. Thank you so much for your question. My, my name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Thank you, Jacob. Mm -hmm.